Hello and welcome back to this channel. In this video, which is a part of the notifications in Flutter series in this channel, we are going to implement real-time push notification using Google Cloud Functions, Firestore, and User Segments. Now we all know that push notifications are a fantastic way to engage and retain users by keeping them updated with the latest content and features of your app. And with Firestore and Google Cloud Functions, we can easily send targeted notifications to user segment who subscribe to specific topics. I mentioned that we are going to create notifications to user segments who subscribe to specific topics. It's not about sending notifications to individual user. An example of such apps is a sports news app in which users subscribe or follow topics like football, basketball, or tennis. Then, when a new news is added to the database, a segment or a group of users who subscribe to that sport will receive the notification. We are going to develop this example. Another example is developing a simple social media network where users follow topics or other users and they receive notification when an event occurs. So let's start by setting up the Firebase. And in Firestore database, we're going to set up the example of sports news app. The structure is going to be like this. At the top, we have the sports collection, and then we have football, and basketball, and tennis. Inside each one, from the top, inside football, for example, we have a news, which is a collection again, and it is called sub-collection. Inside this news collection, we have news one, which is a document, and this document has a title, of news one and content of news one and then we can create another news news two again as a document which has a title and content we can go on with news three four five and so on inside the basketball is the same we have the news sub collection inside that we have news one news two each as document with title and content. So how to create this structure in Firestore? Inside the Firestore, we're going to start by naming our collection as sports. And then inside sports, we are going to add document, basketball, football, and tennis. And inside each one, we need to start a collection which is going to be sub-collection and we're going to call it news for basketball, for football and for tennis. You can see for football we don't have the collection so we can start the collection and we call it news. And inside this sub-collection as we discussed we're going to need news 1, news 2 and so on. And as the news 1, 2, 3 is added to the database, the user and users who subscribe to that sport, they are going to get the notification. So as an example here, we are going to add news 1, we are going to add the title, and we are going to add the content. And we are going to click save. Now inside the football, we have the collection of news. Inside the news, we have document news1, which has the title and content. Now let's move to the Flutter application in the Android Studio. Inside the Android Studio, we are going to need the following packages. Firestore Core, Firebase Messaging, and Firebase Analytics, which is optional. And of course, we are going to need to connect this app to our Firebase project. I link to the video that explains the process in the video description or on the top right corner of this video. 
After this, we are going to go to main. Inside main, we need to initialize the widgets in Flutter and then we need to initialize the Firebase. And if you need to continue with analytics, we need to create a new instance of analytics. And inside the material app, also we need to add the analytics and navigator observers. And then we need to have the body, which is topic subscription screen, which is going to be another Dart file. Inside this Dart file, we need to create an instance of Firebase messaging. And then we need to create our sports, a list of string with football, basketball, and tennis as our sports. And then we need to create a variable selected sports because let's check the application. This is the sample application that we are developing. So whenever the user selects a sport, we need to know about it and we need to save the user selection. So we need this variable selected sports. And in the init state, we are going to implement this on message dot lesson. So when we receive a notification, we can print it so we know the app works. And if you don't know, I explained this in the previous video in this series. A notification can have three states. One is when it is foreground, which means that the app is open which is right now. The second state is when the app is closed. It's when we click the back button and we go to the menu. And the third state is when the app is terminated. Like we go to the apps window and then we close the app. So based on these three states, we can program what happens. So on message.lesson, we are going to print the notifications title and body, which is the content. And if on message is triggered, then we are going to show the alert dialog, a small pop-up on the screen that shows the notification title and content. And when the user taps on the notification, the app is opened. This is when the user receives the notification, but the app is closed. And just like now, it is in the notification center. So we can see the notif notification. And here we can implement what happens when the user clicks on the notification. And you can see automatically there is a badge on the application that shows there is a notification. Inside this application, you can see that we have a list view. So we are going to create a list view that builder. Item count is sports.length. Sports is the list of sports that we already defined. You can see football, basketball, and tennis. This is a list. So the length of the list, which is three, is going to be item count. And item builder is going to be sports and index. So it goes through the list. Index 0, index 1, and index 2. And we are going to have the checkbox list style with the title of sport. And when the value is true, which means the sport is selected by the user, we are going to subscribe to the topic by using the function subscribe to topic, which is in the Firebase messaging package. And then we set state to refresh the page. So this is all we do in the app. Now let's go to Google Cloud Functions. Before we go to Google Cloud Functions, you may ask Firebase itself has the function and cloud function service, which is here, functions. In order to create a function inside the Firebase, you need to set up and install CLI on your computer. And you need to do some setups. And in some cases, you get the error for setting the CLI. And then you need to write the function locally on your computer. And using the CLI, you need to upload it to the Firebase cloud function. 
but using the Google Cloud services and Google Cloud function, it's much easier and it is a web-based service. So you can code inside the Google Cloud. And when you deploy the function, you can see it here. It shows up here as function inside the Firebase as well. So let's start with Google Cloud. When you open your Google Cloud, first you need to select the same project as the Firebase. In the Firebase, if we go to project setting, we can see the project name and project ID. So this project name is going to show up in your Google Cloud services. So you need to make sure that you are inside the same project, which is Firebase MSG. That is the name of my project. And with this ID, which is same ID as the Firebase. After you selected the correct project, we go and search for functions. We find cloud functions and we go to this service. If this is the first time you are creating and you are accessing your Google Cloud functions, you see a create function button. You can click that. So when you click on create function, you come to this page. First, you can name your function, any name you like. Inside the trigger and trigger type, you need to select Google Firestore because this function is going to be triggered when something is added to the database. And the event type is create. So you can select, delete, update, or write, depending on your requirement. For example, in this case, we are going to trigger the function when we create something in the Firestore. You can trigger the function when something is deleted updated or written inside the Firestore. It depends on your requirement. For this example, we're going to select create. Now, document path is very important. This is the path inside the Firestore that the trigger is linked to. When anything happens or in this case created in this path, it's going to trigger the function. So if we go back to our Firestore structure, we can see that we want to trigger the function when we create news1 or news2 or news3. So how do we get to this location? What is the path? First, we need to start from the root, which is sports. And then we need to go to the name of a sport football basketball or tennis so the first is the root of our database which is sports and then the next is the name of the sport and because it is variable and we have three different sports we are going to put it inside the curly bracket and you call it any name you want we call it sport so this sport inside the curly bracket is a variable. Football can be replaced by this part. Basketball or tennis can be replaced by this part. Next, inside each sport, we have the collection or sub-collection called news. And we can see that this is fixed in all three sports. So we can, again, because this is fixed, we can write it as it is news and then inside the news collection we have the document news1 news2 these are documents and because these are variable again we can specify as variable inside the curly bracket we call it news sid so this is going to be the path that the function is going to be triggered when something happens, in this case, creating a new news. We click on save and then inside this section, it's closed. You need to click this arrow to open this section. At the bottom, you can see runtime environment variables. You need to add a variable here. 
as a name you need to write g cloud underline project and as the value you need to put the project id inside your firebase basically you go to firebase you go to project setting this is the project id that we're going to get and we're going to add it as a value here and we're going to click next now this is the section we add our code first we need to select node Node.js. There are many versions, but Node.js 18 is okay. There are other languages as well: Java, Go, .NET, PHP, Python, and Ruby. But in this case, we are going to select Node.js. If you know other languages, you can write the function in other languages as well. And source code, we are going to select Inline Editor. In the index.js, we are going to write our function. Basically, what happens when the function is triggered. So, what to write in this function? This is what we need to write. It's a simple JavaScript, and if even you don't know JavaScript, you can easily create the function you want because there are lots of documentations and help available online. So basically in this function, we import Firebase functions and Firebase admin. And then inside we have functions.firestore.document. And we pass the same path to the Firestore where we want to check for any changes. And then on dot on create. This is same as the event type that we selected before as create. So here on that on create, you can replace it with other functions as well. So on create, what happens? On create sport equals to context dot params dot sport and news equals to snapshot dot data. This snapshot dot data is the data that is new and that is created inside the database. So you can see in the next two lines, we are going to extract the information of this snapshot.data, which is called news. News.title is going to be stored into title variable and news.content is going to be stored in the content variable. Next, we are going to create our notification. So payload is going to be the notification and inside notification we have the title and body which is going to be title and content of whatever changed inside the database and then and for topic we are going to specify sport the one that we retrieved from the database before. Why? Because we need to send this notification to users who subscribed to the sport not all the users and then we have the return admin dot messaging dot send payload we are going to send the notification in the last line so we are going to select and copy and paste the function here you notice there is a warning the specified entry point might not be present in your source code this is the entry point and it needs to be same as the name of this entry point. So you copy this one and you paste it here. This can be any name you want. Now inside the package.json, we need to specify the packages we use. It's same as popspec.yaml inside the flutter. So in this function, we use Firebase admin and Firebase functions. So we go to the packages, package.json, and then we write something like this. We specify the name, we specify the version, and then we specify the dependencies, Firebase admin and Firebase functions. Now we click on deploy. It takes some time to deploy the function. You can check the notification section here or next to the function name. You can check these sections to see when the function is deployed. So now, because it takes some time to deploy the function, I have this function already available here. It's the same function. Here you can see the details like the statistics. You can see the details and you can see your code. 
and if you want to change the code you need to go to edit and change it you cannot change it here we go to variables this is the variable that we defined the trigger which is the trigger path the type and where the trigger happens permissions and logs this logs is important you can go to the function and see what happens when the function is triggered if it is successful or not or if it has some error for example here i had some error that the values must be string so you can see if you have any syntax error or not before you can use the function or here process.env gcloud project is not set this is why we set the runtime variable when we created the function so now let's try this let's run the application now for example let's say that the user is going to select football and is going to subscribe to football now we go to our fire store and inside sports we go to football we go to news and we're going to add a document this is going to be news 2 the first is going to be the title of the news which is news 2 title and we need to add another one content if the number of fields here don't match the number of fields in the function that you specified you are going to get an error or an empty notification so for content for example we are going to set news to content and we click save we go back to our application and you can see that we get the notification and in the terminal we can see the title and body they are printed and inside the app we get the alert dialog which has the title and content of the news now let's go to cloud function and we do refresh and we see this is a new entry function execution started and function execution took around four seconds and finished with status ok so here you can see in the logs you can see how the function performs and inside the firebase if we go to functions you can see that function 2 is already added to the functions in the firebase so let's try the notification when the app is closed we go to football and we go to news and we're going to create new one and we click on save and we go to our app and we can see that we get notifications for number for news 4 and news 3 because you can see that because we have two functions i created two functions for the same purpose so we get two notifications for each one let's open our app and you can see that the user previously subscribed to football but when we open the app the tick mark is gone because we didn't save the user preferences to our app you can save this locally you can use shared preferences package for example to store the user's settings locally so that the application when it is opened again all is saved in the application if you are interested in the function database and how to implement the database in the flutter applications you can check the video description there is a good class about flutter databases i hope this was helpful thanks for watching i will see you in the next video